we began to walk. It was almost 11 a.m. Don Juan reminded me once more of the procedure to follow. Watch the wind. Don't let it trip you, and don't let it make you tired. Chew your power food and hide from the wind behind my body. The wind won't hurt me. We know each other very well. He led me to a trail that went straight up to the high mountains. The day was cloudy and it was about to rain. I could see low rain clouds and fog up above the mountains descending into the area where we were. We hiked in complete silence until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Chewing the dry meat was indeed invigorating, and watching for sudden changes in the direction of the wind became a mysterious affair, to the point that my entire body seemed to sense changes before they actually happened. I had the feeling that I could detect waves of wind as sort of a pressure on my upper chest, on my bronchial tubes. Every time I was about to feel a gust of wind, my chest and throat would itch. Don Juan stopped for a moment and looked around. He appeared to be orientating himself and he turned to the right. I noticed that he was also chewing dry meat. I felt very fresh and was not tired at all. The task of being aware of shifts in the wind had been so consuming that I had not been aware of time at all. We walked up to a small plateau on the sheer side of an enormous mountain. We were quite high, almost to the top of the mountain. I could see a very large, shallow cave near the top of the mountain. He climbed up to it like a mountain goat. I marveled at his stupendous agility. I tried to run up the side of the mountain in order to reach the ledge. The last few yards completely exhausted me. Don Juan sat cross-legged on the very edge of the balcony. He told me to sit next to him, to his right. We remained quiet for a while. Don Juan broke the silence. He said in a whisper that we had to act as if nothing was out of the ordinary. I asked if there was something in particular I should do. He said that I should get busy writing and do it in such a way that it would be as if I were writing at my desk with no worries in the world except writing. At a given moment, he was going to nudge me and then I should look where he was pointing his eyes. He warned me that no matter what I saw, I should not utter a single word. Only he could talk with impunity because he was known to all the powers in those mountains. I followed his instructions and wrote for over an hour. I became immersed in my task. Suddenly, I felt a soft tap on my arm and saw Don Juan's eyes and head move to point out a bank of fog about 200 yards away, which was descending from the top of the mountain. Don Juan whispered in my ear, with a tone so barely audible, even at that close range. Move your eyes back and forth along the bank of fog, but don't look at it directly. Blink your eyes and don't focus on the fog. When you see a green spot on the bank of fog, Point it out to me with your eyes. I moved my eyes from left to right along the bank of fog that was slowly coming down to us. Perhaps half an hour went by. It was getting dark. The fog moved extremely slowly. At one moment, I had the feeling I detected a faint glow to my right. At first, I thought I had seen a patch of green shrubbery through the fog. When I looked at it directly, I did not notice anything. But when I looked at it without focusing, I could detect a vague greenish area. I pointed it out to Don Juan. He squinted his eyes and stared at it. Focus your eyes on that spot. Look without blinking until you see. I stared again. The bed of fog that had come down from above had hung as if it were a piece of solid matter. It was lined up right at the spot where I had noticed the green tent. I saw at first the bed of fog superimposed on the fog bank. And then I saw a thin strip of fog that looked like a bridge joining the mountain above me and the bank of fog in front of me. For a moment, I thought I could see the transparent fog which was being blown down from the top of the mountain, going by the bridge without disturbing it. It was as if the bridge were actually solid. At one instant, the mirage became so complete, I could actually distinguish its shadow. I stared at the bridge, dumbfounded. And then I either lifted myself to its level, or the bridge lowered itself to mine. Suddenly, I was looking at a straight beam in front of me. It was an immensely long, solid beam, narrow and without railings, but wide enough to walk on. Don Juan shook me by the arm vigorously. I felt my head bobbing up and down, and then I noticed that my eyes itched terribly. I rubbed them quite unconsciously. Don Juan kept on shaking me until I opened my eyes. He poured some water from his gourd into the hollow of his hand and sprinkled it on my face. The sensation was very unpleasant. The coldness of the water was so extreme that the drops felt like sores on my skin. I noticed then that my body was very warm. I was feverish. Don Juan hurriedly gave me some water to drink and then splashed water on my ears and neck. 
Then I heard a very loud, eerie, and prolonged bird cry. Don Juan listened attentively for an instant. Then he whispered in my ear, Drink some water and chew your dry meat. We cannot stay here. That cry was not a bird.